There are two types of speech sounds, consonants and vowels. The difference is that when we produce a consonant, there is a significant obstruction somewhere in the vocal tract, whereas for vowels there is no such obstruction. What this means is that when we make a consonant sound, something, our tongue, teeth or other part of the vocal tract, gets in the way of the air flowing through the vocal tract, so that the air is either blocked completely or made to move in a way that it would not otherwise have done. For example, the air may be blocked altogether as when we make sounds like P, P, T, T, or K. K. Then we are bringing two articulators together to stop the air completely for a moment. Then we open up the blockage and the air flows out. We can also make a very narrow gap that the air is forced through, as when we make sounds like S, S, F, F, and SH. Try saying S and feel what is happening in your mouth. The air is going out through a narrow gap between your tongue and your alveolar ridge. Or we can make a blockage with our tongue in the middle of the mouth so that the air has to come out along the sides instead, as when we make an L sound. Ooh. All of these different kinds of obstructions which force the air to move in a particular way, and we call these sounds consonants. For a vowel, there is no obstruction. The air is able to flow freely through the vocal tract without being disturbed by anything getting in the way. So a consonant is made by making some kind of obstruction somewhere in the vocal tract. In order to describe a consonant, there are three things we need to know about it. The first thing is where in the mouth the obstruction is being made. This is called the place of articulation. It refers to the place in the mouth where the active articulator makes contact with the passive articulator to produce the sound. These are the places of articulation we find in English. Bilabial. The bottom lip and top lip are brought together. Bilabial means using two lips, as in the first sound of pen. Labiodental. The bottom lip makes contact with the top front teeth, as in the first sound of find. Dental. The tip or blade of the tongue touches or comes very close to the top front teeth, as in the first sound of think. Alveolar. The tip or blade of the tongue makes contact with the alveolar ridge, as in the first sound of tip. Palatoalveolar. The blade of the tongue makes contact with the area just behind the alveolar ridge as in the first sound of sheep. Shh. Palatal, the front of the tongue pushes up against the palate, as in the first sound of yes. Yee. Velar, the back of the tongue makes contact with the velum, as in the first sound of cat. K. The second thing we need to know is exactly what the articulators are doing at the place of articulation. It is possible to make different sounds at the same place of articulation. For example, T, N, S and L are all alveolar sounds. They are made all by bringing the tongue in contact with the alveolar ridge. But they are clearly not the same oh. sounds. This is because we are doing different kinds of things with our tongue when we make them. For T, we make a complete blockage that stops the air flowing for a moment. For N, we are letting the air come out through our nose mm. instead of our mouth. For S, we are flattening our tongue against the alveolar ridge so that just a thin stream of air is able to escape. For L, we are making a blockage with the blade oh. of our tongue at the alveolar ridge 
but at the same time we are pushing the sides of our tongue downwards so that the air can get out along the sides. These different things that we can do with the articulators to make different kinds of sounds are called manners of articulation. So the place of articulation is where in the mouth we are bringing the articulators together and the manner of articulation is what exactly the articulators are doing at that place. The third thing we need to know about a consonant is whether it is voiced or voiceless. Remember from the lecture on the vocal tract that a sound can be either voiced or voiceless. If the vocal folds are close together and vibrating, we get a voiced sound. And if the vocal folds are far apart and not vibrating, we get a voiceless sound. So P and B are both bilabial stops. Bah. They are both made with the lips and they are both made by closing the lips completely so that the air is blocked for a moment. The difference between them is that P is voiceless and B is voiced. So every consonant in any language can be described in terms of these three factors. Place of articulation, manner of articulation and voicing. We will now go through all the consonants in English and describe them in this way. We will explain the different manners of articulation and see which sounds English has which are made with these manners of articulation. Stops. A stop is a manner of articulation where two articulators are brought together to completely block the air flow through the vocal tract. When the block is released, the air rushes out and a sound is produced. A consonant is a stop if you have to actually release the block in the vocal tract. For example, pull your lips apart or take your tongue away from the roof of your mouth before you can hear a sound. Try bringing your lips together as if you want to make a P, but keep them pressed together while you try to push the air out. This makes no sound. It is only when you pull the lips apart so the air can escape that the sound P is made. There are six stops in English. They are made at three places of articulation, bilabial, alveolar and velar. At each place of articulation there is a voiced and voiceless stop. P is a voiceless bilabial stop. B is a voiced bilabial stop. T is a voiceless alveolar stop. D is a voiced alveolar stop. K is a voiceless velar stop. G is a voiced velar stop. Nasals. Nasals are like stops in that to make them we make a complete blockage in the mouth. But instead of releasing the blockage to let air out through the mouth, we keep the blockage in place but lower our velum to let the air escape through the nose. Try keeping your lips closed and saying boom, 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 boom. Can you feel something moving at the back of your mouth? That is your velum going up and down, blocking the nasal passage and then opening to let air out through your nose. A consonant is a nasal if you can't produce it while holding your nose, since then the air can't get out through the nasal passage. English has nasals at the exact same places of articulation as the stops. Nasals are always voiced in English, so when we describe nasals we don't normally bother to mention this. M is a bilabial nasal, N is an alveolar nasal, ng, the final sound in sing, is a velar nasal. Fricatives. Fricatives are made by bringing the articulators very close together, but not close enough to block the air completely. Instead they form a narrow passage, just wide enough for the air to be forced through. This creates a kind of hissing sound which we call a fricative. English has quite a few fricatives at different places of articulation. F is a voiceless labiodental fricative. V is a voiced labiodental fricative. Mm. The first sound in three is a voiceless dental fricative. Th, the first sound in this and that, is a voiced dental fricative. Mm. S is a voiceless alveolar fricative. Z is a voiced alveolar fricative. 
Sh, the first sound in shu, is a voiceless palato-alveolar fricative. Sh. Zh, the last sound in rouge, is a voiced palato-alveolar fricative. Zh. H is a voiceless glottal fricative. <sighs> Affricates. We said that stops are made by making a complete blockage in the mouth and then releasing it to let the air flow. Instead of releasing the blockage completely, we can relax it a little so that there is just a narrow gap, turning the stop into a fricative. Such a combination of a stop and a fricative is called an affricate. There are two affricates in English and they are both palatoalveolar, meaning that the tongue touches the region just behind the alveolar ridge. Ch as in the first and last sound in church, is a voiceless palatoalveolar affricate. J, as in the first and last sound in judge, is a voiced palatoalveolar affricate. J. Lateral. A lateral consonant is made by making a blockage in the centre of the mouth, but pushing the sides of the tongue downwards so that the air can escape along the sides. Try saying t, l, t, l, and feel what is happening in your mouth. Both sounds are made by bringing the tip or blade of the tongue into contact with the alveolar ridge in roughly the same place. But for t, you block the air completely, and the air can't get out until you take the tip of your tongue away from the alveolar ridge. For L, however, the sides of the tongue are pushed slightly downwards and the air is able to escape in a continuous stream. L is a voiced alveolar lateral. There are no other laterals in English. Approximants. Approximants are made by bringing two articulators fairly close together but not so close as to make the noisy hissing sound characteristic of fricatives. There are three approximants in English. W as in will is a voiced bilabial approximant. W R as in right is a voiced alveolar approximant. R Y as in the first sound of yellow is a voiced palatal approximant. Y Note that the IPA symbol for the palatal approximant often has a different use in English spelling. The letter J is often used for the Africa J as in genes, but the IPA symbol J stands for the palatal approximant. Notice the convention for naming the properties of consonants, voicing, place of articulation, manner of articulation. So we say, for example, voiceless alveolar fricative, not voiceless fricative alveolar. When we know how to describe speech sounds, it is also easier to understand how the sound systems of languages are different from each other. The consonant system of Aboriginal languages is quite different from that of English. Aboriginal languages typically don't have fricatives, so they have fewer manners of articulation than English has, but they usually have many more places of articulation. In English, the only sounds that are made at the dental place of articulation are the fricatives th and th. The only sound made at the palatal place of articulation is the approximate y. Most Aboriginal languages have stops, nasals and laterals, both at the dental, alveolar and palatal places of articulation, as well as an additional place of articulation which isn't used in English at all, called retroflex. It involves curling the tongue backwards so that the underside of the tongue blade touches the area behind the alveolar ridge.